Hi there, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Joseph Clough, and I wish you a very happy new year. I hope you've had a brilliant time over the holidays, Christmas, and so on. And you're now ready to take a huge leap in your own personal development to live the life that you deserve. Now, for more information about me, go ahead and visit my website, which is josephclough.com, as well as that, my fan page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Joseph's fan page, and twitter.com slash Joseph Clough. And I tell you those links simply because if you join Facebook or Twitter, you'll be able to get access very soon of a new program of mine. It's an eight-hour free audio program about developing your confidence. There's no sign-ups. There's nothing for you to do other than just to click on the link from Facebook and Twitter once it's released this month, and you can get access to over eight hours of audio of how to develop your confidence. So go ahead and sign up to Facebook and Twitter so you get that access straight away. So in this podcast, I want to tackle a couple of things really just to get us in sync into where we're heading i want to touch upon um uh, say depression the acts of kindness how we can break side outside of our issues and really live the life that we want so we'll be going into a few different places really just summing up the last few things i've been writing about now the first thing i want to talk about is if you're depressed I want to give you some ideas of how you can make changes because we do live in this stressful time. Uh, we're in living a, a high pace, high paced life, and it can be quite easily to feel a little bit depressed. And I want to show you some simple ways of how you can make some changes. Now, depression can come along, or even if we, I know it's a bit of a, a label depression, but let's just say low self esteem or feeling down, whatever you may call it. It can be quite easy to feel a little bit down at times. Maybe it's because we're in a poor relationship or maybe we're single. Maybe we're not enjoying our job. Maybe we're feeling lost in today's um, present financial climate. Whatever it is, there's always a way of how you can change your mind and make sure that you're happy and content. Because the first thing we must realize is that when we're unable to change a situation, we're always challenged to change ourselves and also we've got to remember there have been people in far worse circumstances than where we may be right now and yet they've been able to overcome their own personal demons or low self-esteem or issues that they're facing that we can learn from so i want to go over a few things if you want to make changes in your life especially if you're feeling a little bit um under the weather a bit depressed i want to give you some insights really of how you can make some changes not gonna be the longest of podcasts but i wanted to give you something for this new year and especially because i've been putting all my attention this free audio program on confidence which you're going to absolutely love but i did want to get something out to you for the beginning of this year so the one thing we must do to make a change in our life if we want to change how we feel is that we must take responsibility for where we are right now If we carry on using excuses or playing the blame game, there's no way we're able to change things because we're simply pushing all the power outside of ourselves. If we say, well, it's not my fault, it's my my colleague's fault, it means it's shifting the blame on them and only they can change the situation. If we're blaming our partner and we're saying, well, it's their fault, that means only they can rectify the situation. If we're saying about the financial climate, is literally we're de- uh, depending on the financial climate to change. And I think that's not the way to approach life because there's always people thriving. There's always a way that you can change yourself to make a change that causes you to get that happiness back. So we're really saying that we have to take responsibility rather pushing outside all the power onto someone else or other situations. And I would ev- I would never even say that we consciously decide to have issues or to be depressed or to be anxious or to be worried. But somehow, some way, uh, we've, we're in this situation and we must take responsibility for where we are right now. When we do so, we're back in control. We then have the ability to start making the right positive changes that we desire. And like I said, even if it is something outside of ourselves, like the financial climate or the recession, there's always a way that you can thrive. There's always an example of someone thriving 
in a situation where, where we look at it, we may think, well, I can't do that. Well, absolutely we can, but it all starts with taking responsibility. I mean, let's just think about this for a moment. You are alive because you and everyone before you in, in your family history has managed to adapt to live in their environment. And you're living right now because you've managed to adapt to this point in time. Now, the very nature of that means you are successful, that you are doing something right. Just by biologically surviving, I mean, species are dying out as we speak. They say that 99% or even, I think it's 99.9% .9 of species have died out since the Earth's existence. Yet you are alive and you have the opportunity to make a shift in your world, to thrive. And it all starts with taking responsibility for where we are now. When we take responsibility, assuming control of this moment, taking responsibility for your life so you can begin to live the life that you'd like to have. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about is, in general, the habit. Developing a healthy habit, because depression is simply a behavior. And a lot of people can say, well, depression or anxiety or feeling down is just passed down in my family. It's in my genes. Well, to me, I'm going to be very blunt here, but I believe that's an excuse. It's not correct to say that that's the only way of being, because yes, we can be more susceptible to certain things, but it doesn't mean that it's set in stone. Depression is a habit, is a case of feeling down for a prolonged time that causes a body, the mind and body, to think that it's natural. But it works both ways. When you start to develop the happiness behavior, that becomes a habit. It becomes a way of being in the world. If, for example, let's put it into another context, if you haven't been down the gym for a long time, as soon as you're back there, it doesn't feel good. It feels as like it's, it's very hard to get into. It's very hard to get back into that mindset. It's a bit of a struggle. But after a while, it becomes easier. And it's like everything. Every behavior that we do, if we don't do it for a long time, when we start to get back into that habit, it can be a bit of a struggle. But once you start to maintain and begin to consider where you're putting your attention on becoming more happy, then that starts to develop the habit. So in other words, whatever you do for a prolonged amount of time becomes a natural way of being in the mind and body. When you start to develop the happiness habit, it becomes a habit and a way of being in this world. And the actions that you do on a daily basis will dictate your results. So if you begin to act, feel and think negatively, you begin to get those negative depressive habits. But if you begin to act, think and feel the way you wish, you'll become a new or you'll develop a new habit and that behavior will become ingrained. Even if it feels a little bit unnatural at first, like getting back into the gym, after a while it becomes natural. So you've got to just push through with it and keep on considering where you're putting your attention on what you are uh, feeling depressed or what you'd like to feel. I was personally shy for 18 years of my life. Now that's a long-term habit right there. You could say I was like a professional person at being shy, but I changed it and it all started when I began to consider where I'm putting my thoughts, where am I feeling those feelings, and how can I change those feelings, and developing a new way that causes the habit to be a happy habit. And one way of doing that is to simply imagine, every night you go to sleep, take 10 minutes out to hallucinate, to visualize how you'd like to be, and if you can do it, do it in the morning as well. And the reason why I want people to visualize how they'd like to be, it causes the brain to develop a new habit and strategy. Because of the, the brain, it can't really distinguish the difference, the difference even, between what is real and imagined. I mean, if you ever watched a movie, and you were so lost and engrossed in the movie that you felt the strong emotion of whatever the character was feeling, maybe the sadness or the happiness, the fear, the anxiety, the joy, the thrill, whatever it is, you lose yourself in that movie because your brain, in a way, begins to get so lost in it that it thinks it's happening right now. And that's why we feel those feelings. And when you think about anxiety in general, anxiety is simply a hallucination. And let me just explain that a little bit. 
when you begin to imagine what might go wrong, if you're thinking about a meeting, you think, oh, I hope it goes really well, or um, I don't think it's going to go very well, or what are the people going to think about me? What if it doesn't go? Um, what if I make a fool of myself? When you begin to consider those thoughts, what you don't want, it causes your body to get um, that anxiety building up in you. So you, because you're literally telling your body to get anxious about it because we're thinking of those thoughts of what we don't want to happen. But if we begin to hallucinate as we go to sleep or when we wake up in the morning, we're telling our body that this is in the way, there's going to be the way we're going to start to think and act. It thinks it's true and it thinks it's a new strategy. So simply by putting your focus on how you'd like to be and hallucinating it of how you'd like to be, it causes your unconscious mind to fall in sync with it. And when you think about it, sports people know this completely and effortlessly. They're taught to visualize about winning, about scoring, about finishing a race, or to achieve a certain level. They imagine it in their mind. That's their focus. They're focusing on what they want. And it causes their bodies to fall in sync with that. So when they do the action, or they run the race, or they play the match, their body knows how it's going to act in in foresight. So it's really important to imagine or to consider how you would like to be. Because that means we're sending that signal to our unconscious mind that that's the new strategy. Now the other thing I wanted to give you is a little tip. I mean, if you think about depression, um, I want you to consider like the, the general ass. If you can imagine a person who's depressed, usually they're looking down a lot, aren't they? They're looking down at their feet, they're looking at the floor, they don't have much... Um, energy about them they don't seem as if they're really engaging that well and it's quite understandable because when we're depressed we're very lethargic and we just feel quite insular in that way but i want you to consider thinking about looking up more often because people are when they're depressed they're renowned for looking down when we begin to look down we're actually tapping into our feelings and now if we're feeling negative already and we continue to look down we're actually tapping into more of it. We're getting locked in on that feeling of depression. So now's the time to start looking up. Looking up is a very much a visual process for the brain. And in this visual process, or process, there's little or no um, negative feelings because we're over, we're considering only the visual. So wherever you are, try looking up more than usual. So if you're depressed, go out for a walk and look up at the beauty of the world around you. Really engage your eyes in the far distance, looking at beautiful views, looking and considering what's above your eye level. That causes your unconscious mind to get yourself out of negative feelings. So that's a great way, just simply by looking up. I mean, it's pretty much a, a phrase, isn't it? So don't worry, just look up. It's just one look up to those good times, look up or chin up and all those type of things. They're literally just metaphors that even to biologically to look up because it takes us out of being locked down into those negative feelings and it takes us into the visual process. Now that kind of really brings me on to moving because if we go for a walk, we start to move and it actually is really important because uh, part of happiness is not just a mental process, but actually a biological one. I mean, how many depressed people are full of energy? They're bouncing around, so you just can't stop them being... Um, you can't stop them from moving around, because they're just so energetic. Very rarely, isn't it? I've never actually met someone who's depressed who is always full of energy, and you can't stop them from moving around everywhere. Simply because when we feel down our body feels it too. When you start to feel down, you you feel very lethargic. You don't feel like moving. Your body gets locked down into those feelings once again. But when we start to move, whether that be a little bit of exercise or maybe going for a walk every day, your brain is releasing something. And what is it releasing? Dolphins. Now, of course it's not dolphins, is it? But... When you think about this, though, it releases endorphins. Endorphins are natural highs for the brain, and they keep you happy. Now, just think about this for a moment. Let's take the metaphor of those dolphins. Imagine those endorphins are dolphins. 
Just think about those poor, depressed dolphins we're keeping captive in our mind by not moving around. It's now time to release them from captivity in the habitat of happiness. And simply, when you think of habitat as well, there's a habit there, we've been talking about habit, to develop new habits of movement. So really, it's a great metaphor to think of like that, that we got to release those dolphins in the brain to be able to get the energy going. So when we make those movements, we're actually to pushing out this happy chemical. So it's a great metaphor just to consider to make movements in your life. When you start to be active, your brain gets active too. Now, really, that goes on to the next part as well, because we're saying to move biologically. When we move biologically, we're releasing those dolphins or endorphins. And as we release those, it causes us to make us feel that natural high. It's a natural drug the body releases to make us, or releases, to make us feel happy. But it also goes on to the mental side as well. You see, it's all about growing. I think life is about growing. If you're not growing, you're pretty much dying, really. I mean, I know it's a hardball words, really, but I want you to get this point, because when you stop growing emotionally, and you stop personally engaging your brain and developing yourself, it just becomes slow, tired, and non-willing. And when you think about that, that's probably like a good metaphor or analogy of a depressed person. They feel slow, they feel tired, and they don't always feel that happy to help themselves because they're just locked down on those negative feelings. But when you begin to engage in your emotional well-being about growing yourself as a person, it causes your unconscious mind to look for more of it. It really causes your unconscious mind to look for more answers and solutions. I mean, think of a plant. A plant needs the sun to grow. It needs the right environment. It needs the right nourishment. But if you don't, it just withers and dies. Now, take that metaphor as when it comes to the brain. We need to change our environment. We need to give your brain the sunlight, which could be like going out for walks, even like the physical sunlight. We know that that actually makes us happy by being in the light. But to really give ourselves the right nourishment, maybe by like reading my blogs or listening to my audios or picking up a book, engaging with people, inspirational people. When you engage your mind with something, in the positive, absolutely, it makes it grow and it blows out those cobwebs. So we're saying we've got to move in the body, but we've also got to move in the mind. We've got to kind of clinch that thirst of growth. We're always here to learn. You're listening to this simply because you want to change yourself. And that's a great thing of putting your mind in the right direction. And the more you do so, you're blowing out those cobwebs and actually starting to make that movement, starting to get juiced up about life again. Now, the other type of thing I like to talk about is simply where is our focus? Because whatever you think about, you bring about. Wherever your attention goes, energy flows. So where is your focus? Is it on the doom and gloom is it on the, or is it on the bright side of life? Now, if you catch yourself thinking negatively, it's your signal from your brain to focus on what you want. That's what I'd like you to treat it as. When you start to feel as if your focus is drifting to the negative, that's your time to take responsibility and to focus on what you want. That becomes a habit after a while. So as soon as you start to feel negatively, your brain automatically begins to change your focus. Now, one way of simply changing your focus is to write down things that you're grateful for. We may have all heard about it, like the feeling gratitude or developing gratitude lists. They're great things to do because when we're grateful for something, we're starting to, to look for inequalities about ourselves. We're starting to look for the good feelings. And when we, we start that process, the brain starts to look for more. So even noticing your own personal qualities every day, what have you done right today? What wonderful qualities or personality traits do you have? It causes you to simply, unconsciously, look for more of them. Now as you consider that, what I'd like you to think about is that your brain is biologically kind of hooked up and at sync to look for more of whatever you focus. 
So that's you ever brought, thought about buying a new car? When you think about buying a new car, you begin to see that car or that model, that make of that car everywhere that you see. Or if you learn a new word, you begin to see it popping up everywhere because you're telling your brain this is now in your reality, and it starts to look for more of it. So wherever your focus is going, your unconscious mind is trying to look for more of it. If you're focusing on what you don't want, your unconscious mind will definitely seek more of all the things you don't want. If you start to focus on what you do want, your unconscious mind starts to seek for all the things that you would like to achieve, or the type of things you'd like to experience. And if you take the analogy of like a satellite navigation system, what's the first thing that you do when you turn on the satellite navigation system? You're on a journey, and the first thing you do is you put in your destination, don't you? And then the sat-nav, in all its intelligence, finds the quickest route for you to get there without any delays or without going all the other wrong directions so you don't get lost. You know exactly where to go and it readjusts its course depending on what you're doing. Now imagine in your mind that you put your destination as your thoughts and feelings are feeling negative. If you put your, if your thoughts and feelings are always in the negative, your unconscious mind is finding the direct route to think of those things or to find more of it. So it's now time to imagine putting your mind into where it needs to be. So that becomes your destination. And then your unconscious mind will figure out the route to be able to get there as quickly as possible. And it's all about your focus. To continue to focus about where you'd like to be. To focus on what you'd like to achieve. To put your attention on the wonderful feelings or the good things about your life. The gratitude once again. And it causes your unconscious mind to simply consider other ways of being you to consider and look for more solutions in being happy now the other part is simply the realization the realization that you are powerful and as you consider that when you think about people are not changing so people who get locked down in their issues are not changing it's usually because they're unaware of the issue that they have most people around the world, I believe, are asleep to their present unhappiness. They think it's like a way of being. It's like they've had it for so long. They think, I am depressed or I am a phobic or I am anxious about these things and that's my identity. That's who I am and I've got to live with that. And it's as if that it is a part of their identity. It's a part of who they are and they can never shift it. Well, I'm here to tell you that that isn't the case, and it definitely should not be the case. I think aspects of society can definitely breed the thoughts of inadequacy. If you think about these glossy magazines, I mean, to be blunt with you, they're trash. They're absolutely trash. We don't need them. I mean, they breed simply thoughts of inadequacy, inadequacy or not feeling good enough or trying to get the next best thing or trying to search and search in a materialistic world world and that really goes for most of the media really that's what they try to sell you things you see but i'm here to tell you that that endless pursuit of happiness of what they try to sell is not the case i'm here to whisper in your ear to wake up from the illusion of the pursuit of happiness. There is no pursuit needed. Happiness does not come from doing, but instead, being. You have everything that you need to make changes that you want to make. And the journey should not be one of external processes, like trying to buy more things or trying to get more materialistic things. Sure, they can help and they can add to our happiness, but happiness really comes from within you. It comes from becoming more still and realizing the beauty of you already. It's an internal process. And the fact, the fact that you're even aware of an issue, it means that you're starting to wake up. And it means you're really waking up to the solution. Rather being caged by the thinking of that this is just a way of life. And the fact that you're listening to this means you're waking up and you're considering actually there is another way. It means that, in other words, you're being conscious that it must be a way of achieving your goal. Another way of being happy. When you get to that place, you're taking responsibility and switching your attention to what you want. And that causes you, and your mind, your unconscious mind, to look for the answers within. I mean, when you think about it, I love the sentence, 
you you are only kept in cages that you cannot see. So I'll say it again: you are only kept in cages that you cannot or that you cannot see. So therefore, you can only be kept in cages that you cannot see. And now you're seeing the illusionary cage, the issue or the problem, and you're realizing there's another way of being. And all you have to do now is put your attention firmly on what you want. To carry out those steps, to consider, to take action, to take responsibility, to move in your mind and body, like to really grow as a person, to really consider the qualities of who you are. And as you consider all those things and to begin to visualize them and put your attention to what makes you feel good in life, you're going to start to notice some big, big changes about how you'd like to be. Now, the other thing, I mean, the final thing I want to talk about is how you can change your state by being kind, by practicing random acts of kindness, because the power of kindness has a profound effect on every aspect of your life. And I know that personally from my own experience. Obviously, that would be personally, wouldn't it? But I know it personally in my own life, because in the last, say, 12 months or so, I have probably recorded about... 50 hours of free self-help audios and videos on or hypnosis or all the loads and loads of contents on this podcast and on Facebook and Twitter and so on simply to help people. That's the real aim of it, to be able to help as many people as possible. I mean, in the last year or so, it's reached over 150,000 people. And I've on my stats, on my podcast, it actually works out that every minute... Of every day, one person is listening to one of my audios, just like on the podcast or from YouTube and so on. One minute, uh, or every one minute, one person listens to my audios around the world. And that's quite a big stat. I don't say that to impress you. But simply, I want to do it because I want to be kind. And I want to tell you why it's important to be kind. That's my business model, to help as many people as possible. But the effect of has, how it has an effect on my life and other people's lives, no matter how big the act of kindness, how small it is, doesn't really matter. It changes how you begin to think and feel in every way. Now, how does this, this act of kindness personally affect you? Now, psychologically, when we give help to someone we know, or even some stranger on the street, it causes us to consciously and unconsciously to feel a sense of gratitude and we talked about gratitude already now the gratitude or being thankful um, by doing a kind gesture or the thanks that we receive by that it causes our mind to look for more things to be thankful or happy about it also gives us the sense of meaning out of life and i think living a life of meaning is the most powerful thing that we can do When we live with meaning, it means we're actually channeling our energy and are challenging our happiness in everything that we do. In fact, I'd probably like to talk a little bit about that on this podcast, about living a life of meaning. But getting back on the psychology of being kind, when we start to develop this kindness behavior, it causes us to develop our own self-confidence, our own personal self-image of being happy in every way. So by combining both gratitude and thanks, or receiving the thanks, it gives us that sense of self-worth and meaning, and it puts our mindset to being positive and seeing life in a positive way. It gives us a sense of well-being and contentment. Now, bearing in mind wherever our attention goes, as we said, energy flows and it expands, it begins to expand, our unconscious mind, as we've said about, or said already, it looks for more things to be grateful for, to be happy about, to be able to really get to where we want to be in our life. So, ultimately, we're attracting more happiness and well-being and searching for more and more meaning out of life when we begin to be kind to others. It starts to get our mind thinking away from scarcity and more in abundance. Now, biologically... By being kind, it has an amazing effect on your health. On a biological level, or biochemical level, it is believed that it really begins to give you that natural high once again. I mean, my friend Dr. David Hamilton mentions that kindness also gives us a healthy heart due to the emotional warmth that it produces from a certain hormone. 
and that causes us to set uh, sets a release and expands the the blood vessels, which produces a lower blood pressure. So simply by being kind, it lowers our blood pressure and it gets our body in sync and in harmony of being healthy. Now, a healthier heart means a healthy long life. But when you take in all the psychological aspects of kindness, our mind and body is completely interconnected. The body listens to thoughts and its feelings. So when we're starting to speak about things in our mind, if, if we're putting our attention on what makes us feel good, or if we're being kind to people, it gives us those wonderful thoughts and wonderful feelings, and our body is always eavesdropping on this. And as it begins to eavesdrop on it, it starts to feel that way. And that's why I said earlier that depressive people have that low lethargic energy, where happy people have an abundance of energy. Simply because the things that we're thinking, the feelings that we're feeling, our body picks up. So when we begin to act that kindness, or start to have that attitude of gratitude, put our attention on what makes us feel good, having a meaningful life, our body feels it too. And in return, makes us feel healthier, or actually biologically causes us to be far more healthier in our body. Now, kindness naturally and obviously helps other people. But being kind to others gives that person you're helping all those benefits too. All the psychological, all the biological. So simply by helping someone, you're making a big impact in their life. And guess what? That becomes a way of paying it forward because they start to change how they act. Right? They want to be kind. They want to focus on what's good in their life. So we're paying it forward to everyone else in our life. And that just makes everyone happy. It becomes the a way of being that everyone starts to thrive off this by just those random acts of kindness. So it really begins a never-ending exchange of kindness and it spreads with each act of kindness. So just remember, every act of kindness that you do, it causes someone else to be kind. And that person who's kind to that other person makes them feel happy. And then they start to do the same. And it just begins to spread in the most wonderful way. But I'm missing something at the moment. There's something else that we need to be aware of. Kindness is not just about being kind to others. That's what we've talked about, about talking about kindness. But one thing we forget about is the wonderful you. We're rarely taught to give ourselves the credit and kindness that we're due. Society does not teach us this either. It just doesn't... I know when I was growing up, in society and who I surround myself, we don't give ourselves enough credit to focus all the wonderful things that we are and all the wonderful things that we do in the world and the wonderful qualities. So I dare you to spend a week, or even better still, a month, by taking 10 minutes of your day, thinking about getting that gratitude again, but really thinking about your own qualities, and being kind to yourself. When you're kind to yourself, you're actually getting all the benefits from the psychological and biological benefits as if you were helping other people. And the more you do it, the happier and healthier and more giving you become. So in summary... When it comes to kindness, it's a powerful in healing others and even yourself, making you and others happier and healthier, both psychologically and biologically. And that's why I really love doing this work, really trying to help people, teach people. That's why I recorded this new eight hour program, which I'm releasing this month, all about confidence, because I know that if you're happy, I am happy. And when I'm happy, I'm emotionally happy i'm physically health ha- um, happy and it causes me to want to do more to help people and it becomes that wonderful way of living a life of meaning it becomes a wonderful win-win situation for myself and you and also if you share it to people it becomes a win-win-win situation so it's really time to start to live our life the way it's meant to be now because it is new year i want to talk to you about living a life of meaning just to finish off this podcast because i have began about six months six months ago changing the way i set goals up for the year or how i set up goals for the months or for the weeks ahead of me i start to to consider a new way 
which I'd like to propose to you very in, in the next few minutes, really, about how you can live a life in full of meaning in this year. Because as I said, coming to the end of 2011, I began to reflect on the type of things I've changed within myself. And ultimately, it, it, those changes were becoming less goal-orientated and instead developing a meaningful life. Now, I had a wonderful 2011. And it all simply came to the point where I began to live this meaningful life. I began to change my way of thinking, having previously been absolutely goal oriented but to the point where I sometimes got lost, or it all came to a point where I just thought I'm getting lost in the future, just considering my goals, but I'm not actually taking care of what's happening right now. But I want to firstly say that goals are wonderful. I will always have goals. But I change the way I, or my relationship to goals. Because goals allow you to get clear on where you're heading. They make sure that you're aligned with what you want and you make sure that it's what you want. And I'd find it very hard to believe that a successful business has no goals. So it's very important to have goals to be able to find where we're heading, where it be in business or where it be personally. But it's definitely a way that we need to develop a new relationship to setting goals, really. Because the reason why we have goals is that it causes us to strive for something. Because we believe that the reward or success of achieving that goal will have an effect on our emotional, physical, mental or spiritual state of mind. So, for example, if I have more money, I have more freedom to do what I want or to retire or to enjoy life. Maybe if I have a relationship, I'll be happy and it will mean I'm loved or I can share a deep connection with someone. If I have the body that I want, I'm happy, confident and content within myself. If I get that promotion, it means that I have more power or freedom or money, success or uh, achievement or ambition in some way. So you could say all those examples, we wanted those things because it allowed us to feel or to achieve a certain emotional, physical, spiritual sense of well-being. So we know that goals can be absolutely brilliant. But they do have their pitfalls. We can become obsessed by them. We can get overwhelmed by them. We can write them down and forget them. I mean, think about all the New Year's resolutions that people make but don't carry through. And also, goal setting obviously is about future orientated uh, way of thinking so therefore we can get lost in goals and we can forget what's happening right now and i've met and i've worked with many people who are very successful financially or in their career in their business yet no matter how much they've achieved and they've got all these wonderful goals in their mind they're still coming to see me because they want or they don't have that lack that connection with themselves or being happy they're lacking something in their emotional well-being simply because their head is always future based so really i propose a new way of living life when it comes to goals it's all revolved around living a meaningful life and when i i live a meaning life personally it means where i'm passionate where i'm excited about what i'm doing i'm aligned with the highest well-being of me right now and it means that we're still striving, but we're also living life and contributing. We're growing and achieving, but our passion, our need for doing what is best for me right now is the guiding force in directing my life into the future. So we're still having goals, yet we're doing it in a very way based on feeling what's heart-centered for you. Literally, over 2012, I have around five or so goals. Now, they're pretty vague in what they are. They're pretty much like a summary in a sentence or two of the type of things I'd like to achieve. In the past, I used to write down lists and lists and lists of goals. But simply, for example, my business, I have two or three areas where I'm going to put my attention and focus. And it will entail me doing one or two consistent things to achieve them. That is all my goal for my business. There's not millions of goals. There's not 20 goals. It's simply... Um, just a couple of things on each one of us say the five goals that I'm going to consistently do to make a change and really there's two or three hours I'm going to be focusing on and I know 
when I've once I've written it out in a sentence with a real feel about that goal, that's where I'm heading. It's not based on criteria. It's based on what I'm achieving right now. It's a per. It's kind of like what I really want to achieve. That's my intention. So there's no need for overwhelm or confusion because I know that's the general energy that I'm putting my attention on. And once I started to do that six months ago, my business has thrived because I'm focusing on what's important and I'm buying into that passion. I'm really buying into that drive and motivation because it makes me feel good where goals can be very much just writing it down and very abstract in that way. Now for my personal goals, I have made, I have got a health goal which I've summarized up in just a sentence once again. I have a traveling goal which I've sum- summarized up in a sentence. And I know that these sentences, um, and I know that what these sentences mean for me. They're based around who I wish to be as a person rather than the goal. And I know I'm getting there or not getting there by the way I'm feeling right now. I also know living a more meaningful life will allow me to achieve far more than any other goal used to. Far more than any list of goals it used to. When you begin to live a life of meaning, you have your intention being on this present, thinking about the kindness, thinking about the gratitude, the focus of right now, moving my mind and body, beginning to take responsibility for my life, I know I'm going to flow in life. And I know that I'm going to be acting on my greatest joy whilst achieving all the goals I would have gone for, but even more than that. So live a life of meaning with your attention on what gives you the most happiness right now. Have a general theme of what you would like to achieve without obsession, reviewing, uh, without obsession, but you can still review them. You can review them each week just to make sure you're on track on that general summary of where you'd like to be heading. To me, that's the best way of giving meaning. That's the best way of sharing, having love, and truly living life. So I know I went on a a bit of a a rampage of different type of topics there, from the kindness to living a meaningful life by um, breaking outside of our minds. When we think about the cages that we're kept, we're only kept in the cages we cannot see. So when we begin to become aware of issues, we can become conscious and start making changes. And also how to really let go of feeling down or feeling blue or feeling depressed. So once again, I will be doing a the um, new program coming out soon, the free confidence program, all eight hours, eight hours long. And you can find out more about that when I release it on Facebook and on Twitter. So Facebook is facebook.com slash Joseph's fan page and twitter.com slash Joseph Clough. So as soon as it's released, you get instant access to it. There's nothing to sign up. It's just literally for you to embrace and listen to. Lots of hypnosis, lots of coaching, lots of processes to get you to be completely core, confident, and happy in every way. And also I've got my website, josephclough.com. So that's pretty much the end of this podcast, and I, this year I'll be doing many, many more um, to really help you in the best way I can, from um, specific hypnosis tracks to coaching stuff to my thoughts and advice on how to be happier and healthier in mind, body, and soul. So I look forward to speaking to you very, very soon. Many thanks and goodbye.